Much of what we know about cell migration comes from studies of cells moving across two-dimensional surfaces in vitro. However, cells use a variety of different mechanisms to migrate through the complex three-dimensional environments that they experience in vivo. Studying 3D migration in vitro is challenging though, so Niels Gauthier, Benoit Ledoux and colleagues developed a simplified system in which cells migrate along suspended fibronectin-coated nanofibers that mimic 3D fibrillar matrices. The microscopy in that case is easier to perform than what we can get in a complex 3D system. The cells have this kind of spindle shape with like a restricted cell body but with very large extension on both sides of the cell. The researchers, led by graduate student Charlotte Guetta Terrier, compared the movement of fibroblasts on suspended nanofibers to their motility on 2D surfaces or on 1D micropatterned lines that have previously been shown to induce 3D modes of migration. On fiber, the speed was much faster and the persistence was increased tremendously. The speed was relatively similar than what you get in 1D printed line and was about two to three times faster than what you get in two dimension. However, what we have seen is that the cell seems to choose one direction, and on fiber they were keeping this direction, very high persistence, while on 1D lines they were changing direction more often. And for sure on 2D substrate they were going all the way, like, I mean, randomly, like scanning the substrate and so on. Cell migration can be driven by several different types of membrane protrusion. So Guetta Terrier et al. took a closer look at cells migrating on suspended nanofibers. Then what we start to see at higher temporal resolution is that the cell were showing like some element like propagating along the long extension. In fact, those propagation waves were like thin like structure born at the cell body and extending the lineage. Similar structures have been seen to propagate along the length of growing axons and Guetta Terrier et al. observe fin-like waves in a variety of different cell types migrating on suspended nanofibers. The fins were generated roughly once every six minutes, and once they reached the leading edge, they extended it by several microns. The researchers then examined what happened when cells were exposed to multiple nanofibers at the same time. And what we observe in that situation is that the cell like, is probing randomly, and at one point, for reasons that are for the moment obscure to us, the one side of the cell seems to present the major like uh, protrusion system, and that's where the cell is going to go. And the fin, the, the, what we observe, this protrusion, was always leading the way, meaning that the cell like probe first with the fin, then start to contract and migrate on this fiber. Which means that it's contributing not only for the cell body extension, but for the cell polarity and for the migration in one particular direction. That would be a way, in a sense, for cells in 3D to probe the environment and maybe uh, find its way along this very complex environment. Although they protrude perpendicularly to the axis of cell movement, the fins look similar to the lamellopodia that form at the leading edge of cells migrating in 2D. Accordingly, fin formation and cell motility was suppressed by actin depolymerizing agents or by inhibitors of the branched actin nucleating ARP23 complex. Reducing cell contractility, meanwhile, by inhibiting myosin or its upstream activator rho kinase, resulted in the formation of fewer but larger fins. So the contractility and the forces that cells can exert along the fiber are important as well. At the two extremities of the cell body, you observe focal adhesions, so that's where the contractility is exerting, and that's where the, the, the fins are nucleated, and what we think is that the fact that you have some contractility helps to form, nucleate those fins that will then propagate through the polymerization of actin. Observing how actin polymerization drives the fins' propagation was difficult, however, because the fins rotate around the cell's forward extension as they move toward the leading edge. The researchers therefore teamed up with Alex McGilner from New York University to mathematically model the cell's protrusive behavior. 
what we learn from the simulation is that the curvature of the membrane is locally changing. And as you change the curvature, then you will affect the rate of polymerization. And then that will break the symmetry between the front side and the back side of the fin, and that will propagate the fin in one particular direction. The simulation also helped explain another aspect of the cell's behavior on suspended nanofibers, namely that when cell contractility was increased due to the overexpression of actin nucleating formin proteins, for example, the cells no longer formed fin-like waves and instead produced large cylindrical protrusions called lobopodia. When the contractility of the cell is too high due to the forming polymerization that makes stress fiber and contractile forces, hydrostatic pressure increases in the cell, and then you get this sort of like exploding structure at the front that form and explain this type of behavior. Highly contractile lobopodia forming cells move much less persistently than cells forming fin like waves. In complex 3D environments in vivo, however, cells may switch between the two types of protrusion depending on their contractility and the balance of ARP2-3 and formin activity. When you are a low density environment with only like sparse fiber, the cell may adopt this fin like protrusion to go fast and scan rapidly the environment. When they encounter a very like dense environment, they will be somehow stuck. Then they may change their behavior and start to contract very strongly. And by contracting, they may expand those structures like lobopodia that will basically push the matrix away and open larger pores. And then if they encounter new fiber, they will shift again and restart to migrate with the fin. And potentially it could be also that in vivo cells could use both mechanisms at the same time. You can imagine that in a very confined environment, then you have to like push on the environment, but also send some protrusion to lead the way in a sense. So maybe both mechanisms can be at play at the same time. The researchers now want to investigate how the leading edge communicates with the rest of the cell when it is extended so far away from the cell body, and to determine how groups of cells undergo collective migration along suspended nanofibers. In the meantime, however, you can learn more about how protrusive waves guide 3D cell migration in the paper by Guetta Terrier et al., published in the November 9, 2015 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Thank <laughs> you.